I'm Matt Livingstone with Miami Dade Fire Rescue. I'm a lieutenant in our Research and Development Bureau for our Logistics Division. Hi, my name is Corey Kipper. I am also a Research and Development Lieutenant with Miami Dade Fire Rescue. Well, Miami Dade County is uh, fairly large. We're 70 stations. We have almost 3,000 firefighters. We go from the high rises in Aventura all the way down to the wildlands and uh, almost to the Florida Keys, uh, down to stations in Homestead, Florida City. We are from the Atlantic Ocean all the way out to the Everglades. Very large uh, area and uh, actually built out. The only place to go now is up. We, in conjunction with uh, E1, the Miami-Dade Fire Department uh, has decided that we're going to deal with our cancer rate that has skyrocketed through our ranks. Our fire chief, Dave Downey, has decided to take that step and move with E1 to develop a clean cab concept uh, on our, our fire trucks. Our department, for those that don't know it, has had a cancer rate among our actives as skyrocketed. One out of every three of our actives has cancer. One out of every two of our retirees has cancer. So not only are we doing clean cap concepts, we're updating all of our bunker gear and a lot of other issues that we're dealing with when it comes to our firefighting regulations with SCBAs and everything else. We added a compartment to the to rear the cab that are going to have slide outs on them to mount the STBAs and their tools and their flashlights. Uh, the guys will have a separate set of flashlights for firefighting, separate set of lights for EMS calls, separate set of tools for firefighting, and a separate set of tools for EMS calls. Uh, all the clean stuff will be inside the cab, all the dirty stuff will be outside the cab, hence the clean cab concept. Uh, the, the forward compartment here is where they'll put the contaminated gear and uh, nothing that ever goes in that compartment will ever go into the inside of the cab. This clean cab concept not only goes just with the trucks that we're developing at this time, it also deals with our bunker gear and everything else. The 1851 Center has actually started something new coming to our stations and they're after a large fire and it's deemed that the contaminants uh, are uh, the gear needs to be changed out, I should say, get all the carcinogens and everything into the bags, bag it all up, and they will come pick it up and deliver new stuff. This is the forward compartment we were speaking of earlier where the contaminated gear would go into. There will obviously be a helmet holder in there and, and some hooks for the guys to hang their, hang their radio straps on or whatever, whatever they need to put in there that, that got contaminated during the scene. Uh, nothing will ever come out of here and go into that, into that cab. That's the concept. Um, this is the SCPA compartment from the, the driver's gear. The SCBAs and scuba tanks mounted here, so the guys need to get to them on scene. On the opposite side of the truck is a 60 inch slide out that will have the three SCBAs and another scuba tank on there. This way the guys that are going into the scene can get there while they're putting their SCBAs on, talk about their assignments, talk about what, the, what they need to be doing and where they're going to be on the fire, and everybody can, we can have some accountability there. And, uh, just to make the call run smoother. These compartments are completely enclosed so that there's no off-gassing of the equipment into the cab whatsoever. They've sealed them completely so that when we get back to the station at that point, they can take the bag uh, contaminated gear off, take it to the station. There's a, a spot in the station that we're keeping everything that's contaminated. <clears throat> we do a gross decon at the scene and at that point the SCBAs will be uh, have a gross decon done to them but they will continue to off gas a little bit and that's why they go into this separate uh, compartment here. This uh, truck uh, is just one of many trucks that we're building. Uh, Dan Peters, the president of Rev Group, has uh, gotten together with our fire chief Dave Downey and we have worked a long time together trying to get this concept going. So again, this is going to be our first uh, shot at it. I'm sure we're going to come up with many revisions. No doubt. Yeah. But Corey and I both have uh, over 20 years of experience on, in operations. And we uh, sat from the very beginning of designing these trucks out from bumper to bumper. Uh, so it's exciting for us too to actually see 
the uh, designs come in with our logistics service uh, division and it's, uh, it's been a long process and we're excited that it's finally uh, coming through now. Yeah, it's been a, a very big group collaborative effort along with our division chief Paul Stobian. Uh, he's, he's been a great help of letting Matt and I and Captain Payone kind of take the reins and, and uh, build up the trucks the way that we feel that they need to be built. And he's supported us 100% and it's, it's always good to be, have somebody like that involved. It's, it's been a great, great experience with E1. They've backed us on our changes. We've had a couple of changes right during the middle of the cycle of them being built. They were very helpful, helped us uh, make some different designs to them. Uh, for example, the hose beds are larger. We said, wouldn't it be nice to have LED lights put up there so our guys could see at nighttime when loading the hose. They thought that was fantastic. They hadn't done that before. We loaded them up. Uh, there's all kinds of new features that uh, our, our rep came to us with and we've integrated a lot of new stuff with these trucks.